area. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, hello, hi, good morning, everyone. I'm sorry for the delay in checking in. There was a little hiccup somewhere. So uh, let's uh, allow ourselves another minute or so, then we can uh, start as people try to get in. Good morning. Uh, hi, Mario. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Tell me Lola. Yes. Lola, right. Lola for short. <laughs> tell me for short. <laughs> oh, tell me for short. Okay. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh, no, no. Okay, again, uh, good morning, everyone, uh, as I do all the time. If you can hear me loud and clear and you don't mind, you want to turn your cameras on and wave your right hand so I can see that you are here with, with, with that. So, uh, again, uh, as I said, there was a little hiccup in uh, starting uh, the, the meeting, so others uh, can uh, join. Again, welcome to VASI, that is the Virtual Applied Data Science Training uh, Institute. This is uh, the fall training series. We had a spring series uh, in the spring. So here, uh, because we had a, a spring series that covered a lot of the fundamentals, those of you who were not here last week, we started last week. So the first three weeks, that is last week, this week and next week is what we call the pre-training uh, series. So the pre-training series is more also for those who lack uh, the, the foundational uh, stuff. So last week, if you are not here last week, that is fine, that covered uh, the foundations of data science, which is more of an, a broad overview of what data science uh, entails. So if you mix it, the recordings are there, you can go back and then uh, review the recordings. And then if you have any questions, you can uh, send that uh, to, to us. So today also is for the pre-training series uh, part two that will cover Python. So Python is very essential in, in uh, data science. That is one of the key uh, programming tools in data science in addition to R. So again, if you lack that foundation, or if you want to sharpen your skills in Python today and tomorrow will be uh, your chance to learn uh, some uh, Python. And then next week will be on probability and, uh, and statistic. Then the week after that will be the main session, which will be the live uh, presentations 
or the live instruction of uh, the various uh, modular topics. So today we have the pleasure of having Dr. Musa Dumbia, who is a professor in the Department of Mathematics here at Howard. He covered uh, the Python 1, Python 2 uh, series uh, in the spring. So we are glad to have him to lead uh, this uh, uh, discussions. So again, as I said already, the recordings are there. Go ahead, take your time, and then review uh, the recordings. In the spring, it was uh, uh, two sections. If I say two sessions, we covered the Python over two weeks. But today, uh, Professor Dumbia have more like um, a, a refined version in, in quotes, if I may say. So uh, Dr. Dumbia also has uh, a Coursera uh, uh, a course on linear algebra and data science. He will probably maybe say a word about it. So you can feel free to uh, review those as well. So without any further ado, let me hand over to Dr. Musa Adumbia. So uh, Musa, it's all yours now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of our pre-training. Um, like John mentioned, we have a free data science course on Coursera. It's 100% uh, free. It's uh, the direct application of linear algebra into data science, right? So feel free to check it out. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you a video from last uh, session. So in the video, you will learn how to install Python first, how to install uh, the control uh, uh, Gitbash, Gitbash uh, software. So you will learn how to install py uh, Python via Anaconda. So once you install Anaconda, you'll be able to access uh, the Jupyter Notebook where you will be writing the code. So we will learn also how to open Jupyter Notebook. There are many different ways how to open it. Once we learn how to open Jupyter Notebook, then we're gonna start you know, writing codes. So we're gonna learn about the data type in Python, the string method, and at the end, we're gonna cover with some basic operation in Python. So let me share that video with you. As part of the University of Delaware, Howard University and the National Science uh, NSA uh, social media project on uh, uh, data science. So without further ado, I will hand over to Dr. Musa and then he will probably tell you more about uh, himself uh, also. So Dr. Dumbia, it's all yours. Oh, thanks for the kind introduction. Hello everyone. Uh, in addition to what John said, uh, we are also developing a Coursera course that is uh, the application of data uh, linear algebra to data science. All right, so feel free to check that. It will be available like in a couple months. All right. So, uh, like John mentioned, uh, this course is for uh, like an overview of the Python course is now in de detail. So, if uh, you are advanced Python, this might not be. Uh, it might be boring for you. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, show you how to install the working environment. Right. So we first, we are going to install uh, Anaconda. From Anaconda, we'll be able to access the Jupyter Notebook. Right. From there, we write our program. In addition to Anaconda, we'll also install uh, the Git. So Git will allow us to move around you know, the file quickly, right? So without further ado, let's go to browser. Uh, I wanna go to the browser and I'll just uh, search for Anaconda Python. Can you see my browser? No. No, yeah. Okay, so uh, you click on individual uh, uh, edition, you click on that, and 
uh, you already know that I'm using a Windows computer. So if you're using Mac, you will select Mac, and then you have to choose that. But I'm going with a uh, uh, Windows, and then you click on download. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Little wide. Yes. But Musa, let me try that. I think someone's yeah. hand is up. Okay. Yes. Yes, go ahead. No, I think that was the recorded. Oh, it was a recording? Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, go ahead. No, actually, my question was passed. I'll, I'll come back to it at the end. I want to know what I should do to get attendance. Should I go? I, I put my name in the chat group. Is that sufficient? I'm posting the sign in link uh, now. Please uh, look for it in the chat shortly. Okay. Okay. So once the download is done, then uh, you need to open it. I'm going to click on it here. It's almost done. Then I open the, the file, the file here, and then click next. Can you see this uh, wizard? The wizard just pop out. Can everybody see that? Yes. yes. Okay. So you click next and then agree to. So if you are using uh, your work computer, just select just me. If you're on, you can choose all user. But I'm gonna go for just use me for now. And then you can leave it at the default location. Click next. Uh, here, I do want you to check this box, right? Unless you know how to set, you know, uh, the path of your environment variable, right? If you don't know that as a beginner, check this, you know, don't worry about this warning. This one is, uh, will be due to the fact if you are using uh, other version of Python, let's say you're using Python 2, and then you check this, then there will be a conflict between your Python 2 and Python 3. But as a beginner, check this and then click install, right? And then this might take about a couple of minutes, like two minutes. And then it's, uh, it's easy to learn. It's a uh, packet user, you have to do a system. And then I'll search for Anaconda if I don't see. This is a great question. Um, not, not to jump, uh, sorry to jump in, but I'm sure others have the same uh, 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 question. So uh, if, if you have time, just take a look at it, uh, the link. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I remember what um, I think I, I have a colleague, I don't know if he's online now, he, he needed SaaS, he couldn't get it free, he needed to pay, but Python is absolutely free and they got a lot of support, good point. And then now my download is done, then I click uh, on next, right, next, so I need to, uh, I don't want to go to tutorial, but you can, uh, I want to uncheck this and then just click finish. Uh, no. I, wanna, I don't want to do it twice. It looks like I double click on it twice. So I finished the installation, right? So for me to know that, let me come here. I will uh, search for Anaconda if I don't see Anaconda. Anaconda prompt, let me see. I want to double check because the same uh, wizard pop up again. Uh, we don't want to go over the same thing. Jupyter Notebook, for example. So I want to see. I think it's, it's a UI. Yeah, it's Jupyter Anaconda from, yeah, J. U P Y yeah. notebook and then uh, yeah so this means uh, I have it so I'm not gonna uh click next here anymore I'm gonna close this up I'm gonna close this uh wizard that just opened right so that's what uh how you install uh, Anaconda on Windows. So the next thing that we need to install is Git, right? So let me close this for now. I will uh, later on explain how to 
uh, how to install, I mean, how to open Anaconda, right? We got several ways how to open Anaconda. So I'm gonna go to my browser again. I will just type a git, git download or git bash, click on that, right? And then click on the first. Let me know if you don't see my browser. So it select Windows because I'm using Windows computer. I click on it. All right, so I'm um, click on download. It's downloading here. Let me minimize this at my end. So once the download is done, I'm going to open it. All right. Um, can you see? Can you see this? This wizard? Can you see the wizard here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I think there are some a uh, little bit hard. So, uh, if if you're struggling, uh, just let us know. If we have a lot of people struggling, otherwise just follow it, and then we'll do that journey. Uh, okay. During the break. Okay. So you can raise your hand uh, if uh, you are behind. Uh, so now I'm gonna click next. I leave it be at uh, the default location, right? uh oh i think i didn't <laughs> uninstall my git my okay, yeah so let's see right so i'll just uh do this are we following mm -hmm. so i'm gonna click next um excuse me right click next i'm, on... I'm just leaving everything as it is professor next right. uh it seems next. like we have a question uh musa uh... next Dr. Dombia. Next. Okay. I have a question. I'm downloading from the, the, the link to the chat also for the gates. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm leaving everything as it is. Can you type is. your and question then, uh, in the chat uh, uh, if you don't next. mind? Yeah. So I don't want to go through the experimental. So I'm not checking those. And uh, the installation story. This is live uh, recording uh, questions, right? It's not live. No, this is a, she has a question. Uh, actually, she has an actual question. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. she, she's yeah, she's right there. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> yes, um, okay. I'm. Uh -huh. I'm downloading from Mac, and it says before I download Git that I have to download Homebrew. Um, um, you can use Homebrew, but you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to use only Homebrew. You can use um, uh, okay. once you go to Git, you choose uh, the one that says uh, binary. Uh, oh, binary install. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Choose that. Yeah. Okay. Then you, you. You don't need a. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so if I want to link the git part, I can do that. So I'm not going to uh, look at this. So I will say finish, then it will open the git bash. So now once you open the git bash, uh, you need, if this is your first time to install it, you need to do this. So let me bring it here. So you can uh, make it bigger by grabbing like this. If you want to type inside and then you want the font to be bigger, for example, if I type this, PWD might be smaller, but if I press uh, shift and plus, it will make it bigger. Uh, uh, control plus PWD. Uh, right. So I will press uh, control and plus, that will make the phone bigger, right? So the reason why I'm doing this, I want to know where am I exactly right now, PWD. So it's just here, I'm at uh, user to so now you need to set up, you need to configure it, your username and your email. Uh, this is important, especially if you, later on, you will be uh, hosting your project on GitHub. So from your local repository, you can just push it to the GitHub and it will have your signature on it. So 
first uh, you need to configure your name you will say git config dash dash two dash so global user that name and then you put your name here for example let me put uh here and then hit enter and then a git config right dash dash global user the email right user the email I put my Howard email here Our the edu and then uh hit enter right so we done so if you want to see uh git config you want to make sure that you went through git from config dash dash list uh list at some point you should see your email right and then you should see your username also so this means that the, uh, the configuration was successful right so now sorry Musa, sorry Musa. um <clears throat> i just finished uh the setup um uh, i don't know if it's too fast for the others but <laughs> i'm just oh. trying to <laughs> trying to catch up with what you're what you're right. saying uh, uh, so I go PWD, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You can DC recording, right? That's a prime working directory. You just uh, see <laughs> if, uh, where am I? Okay. And after that. What can you take us from there? I go git get, config, get, get config. Space. and do I need the hyphens there? Yeah, dash dash. You need to do dash dash. Dash dash, and then global. Okay, and then username. No, user dot name. User dot name, yeah, and then. And then your name. Oh, my name it, uh, because it told me my my username was. Uh, okay. One okay. So you have to be take us from where we, we downloaded it successfully from from that point onwards. How do we proceed? Uh once you download it successfully, you uh, uh open that file and click on it to install it. I, I did I did that. You install it completely? Yes. Okay, then open the git bash. So hard let me show you if just in case I went to the menu and i opened the, i opened the anaconda 50 64 bit folder and it gives me it gives me all the pro program that is installed anaconda navigator anaconda powershell prompt anaconda prompt jupyter network recent spider settings and spider anaconda um you can search git when you install it it should be here you see the orange uh, blue red you Go to your thing and then search it. And then this is for Windows. Yeah, right? this for Windows. Okay, yeah. So go to your search box here at the bottom. Can you see that? And then type Git and then um, open it. Click on it and then open it. G G S G for the person? Yeah, G I T. G I T, okay. Mm -hmm. Git. Okay. And then hit enter. I did. Yeah, so you should see a dark screen like this. No, when I hit get it, it takes me somewhere else. Does it open? Okay, let me um I don't know if I can uh right here, right? see your windows. I can't. Uh but what does it say? When I hit git, it takes me to uh, uh to, to, to something called a GitHub. Oh, the, those are two different things. Um, let me see. Uh, do you see at your program? If you go to program file, do you see that? Yeah, when I, when I, when I go to uh, the, the, the program menu, it, it shows me Anaconda installed. It says Anaconda 64 bit new. Uh, was everybody able to uh, install both the Anaconda and the uh, Git Bash? Any problem? Any anything? Uh, 
Okay. La Cola is okay, but then no Vegeta. I'm still trying. Are you still doing Vegeta? Yes, yes. Okay. Anybody else? So your Git, uh, is is it downloading or it's installing? No, I don't have it installed. The G, that's a problem. Yeah, I need to install the GIT in the Windows first. Yeah. So did you download it? Do you know how to download it? No. Oh, sorry. Maybe that part went a little bit fast. Let me come back here. So you search this word, Git. You go to Google, you type Git, and then when, once you do that, then you click on uh, download. Because you're using Windows, so you will use the first one here that says Windows. Download Git, yeah. Let me see, download for Windows. Yeah, for Windows. And then the first one, right? Yeah. It's, it's downloaded, now I execute it. Yeah. You accept all the terms and conditions. Yes. All right. So, okay, so I'm leaving everything as it is. And then uh, uh, next. So I don't want to go through the experimental, so I'm not checking those. And uh, the installation story. Anybody else having trouble installing Git or Anaconda? Okay, so if I wanna launch with this part, I can do that. So I'm not gonna uh, look at this. So I will say finish, then it will open the Git bash. So now once you open the Git bash, uh, you need, if this is your first time to install it, you need to do this. So let me bring it here. So you can uh, make it bigger by grabbing like this. If you wanna type inside and then you want the font to be bigger. For example, if I type this, PWD might be smaller, but if I press uh, shift and plus, it will make it bigger. Uh, the control plus PWD. Uh, right. So I will press uh, control and plus, that will make the font bigger, right? So the reason why I'm doing this, I want to know where am I exactly right now, PWD. So it's just here, I'm at uh, user to uh, so now you need to set up, you need to configure it, your username and your email. Uh, this is important, especially if you, later on, you will be uh, hosting your project on GitHub. So from your local repository, you can just push it to the GitHub and it will have your signature on it. So first uh, you need to configure your name. You will say git config dash dash two dash, so global user that name and then you put your name here for example let me put uh here and then hit enter and then uh, git config right dash dash global user that email right user the email I put my hour email here Power the edu and then uh, hit enter. Right, so you're done. So if you want to see uh, git config, you want to make sure that you went through git from config dash dash list uh, list. At some point, you should see your email, right? And then you should see your username also. So this means that the, uh, the configuration was successful, right? So now, sorry, Musa, sorry, Musa. Um, <clears throat> I just finished uh, the setup. Um, uh, I don't know if it's too fast for the others, but <laughs> I'm just oh. trying to trying to <laughs> catch up with what you're what you're saying. Uh, uh, 
So I go PWD, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's a prime working directory. You just uh, see mm -hmm. if, uh, where am I? Okay. And after that. What's the logo you take us from there? Yeah, I so go get, config. get, okay. get config. Space. And do I need the hyphens there? Yeah, dash that. You need to do dash dash. Dash dash, and then. Global. Okay, and then username. No, user dot name. User dot name, yeah, and then. And then your name. Oh, my name, uh, because it told me my my username was. Uh, okay. One second. Okay. You have to be take us from where we, we downloaded it successfully from from that point onwards. How do we proceed? Uh once you download it successfully, you. Uh, uh, open that file and click on it to install it. I, I did. I did that. You install it completely. Yes. Okay. Then open the Git bash. So hard. Let me show you. If just I in case. I the menu and I open. I open the Anaconda fifty sixty four bit yes. folder, and it gives me. It gives me all the pro program that is installed. Anaconda Navigator, Anaconda PowerShell prompt, Anaconda prompt, Jupyter Network, recent Spider settings, and Spider Anaconda. Um, you can search Git when you install it. It should be here. You see the orange, uh, blue, red. You go to your thing and then search it. And then this is for Windows. Yeah, right? this for Windows. Okay, yeah. So go to your search box here at the bottom. Can you see that? And then type Git, and then um, open it. Click on it, and then open it. G G S G. What is what? Yeah, G I T. G I T. Okay. Mm -hmm. Git. Okay. And then hit enter. I did. Yeah, so you should see a dark screen like this. No, when I hit get it takes me somewhere else. Does it open? Okay, let me um I don't know if I can uh yeah, right. see your windows. I can't. Uh but what does it say? When I hit Git, it takes me to, uh, uh, to, to, to something called a GitHub. Oh, the, those are two different things. Um, let me see. Uh, do you see at your program, if you go to program file, do you see that? Yeah, when I, when I, when I go to uh, the, the, the program menu, it, it shows me Anaconda installed. It says Anaconda 64 bit new. And then you also installed Git, right? No, I didn't install Git. Oh yeah, yeah. So we are a little bit uh, ahead of you. So that uh, now I got your uh, what you want. So now this is the next thing you need to do. You just type Git at your browser or okay. Git bash here. You download that. Right. You click on this. Download Git. Okay. Okay, so and then download. Once the download is done, then you have to uh, click on it to open it so that the installation will start. It's installing? It's installing. Done. I, I I did it. Okay. 
quick question for Stacy. Uh, where in Slack are we signing in? I, I have opened Slack, but I don't see uh, module two showing up. It, it didn't let me sign in either. Um, which Slack works, workspace did you open? Please use the link that is posted in the chat. It takes you right there. Uh, I will post it again for you. It okay. asks for a password, and I don't, I don't, I don't have a password. I don't remember having a password, but I'll talk to you later. Yeah, because I'm already in uh, in Slack, that's the, um If you're unable to log into Slack, then please send me a direct message with your email. Okay. Installing, installing it. Okay. It's almost there, it's almost there. Okay. Quick question. Uh, Dr. Dumber? Yes. How did you get to this page that is showing? I've finished downloading, but I can't oh. Yeah. Okay, you need to uh, look for it. Uh, if you search it, GIT, you will see this uh, blue, red, uh, green icon. You yes. click on that. Don't click on the GUI, click on the app. Okay, great. Then, right, uh, if you want to make the font bigger, you press, uh, once you open it, for example, when you press Control minus, it will make it smaller. Control plus to make it bigger so that you can see, right? Got you. Yeah, then uh, you can check where you are right now. PWD will tell you your current location. And just PWD. Okay, I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in the, the menu and what do I do now? Uh -huh. I'm, in, I'm, in this menu, I'm in this menu which you opened and what do I do now? Yeah, uh, once you open it, uh, you can tap PWD first. PWD, okay. Yeah, don't worry about the dollar sign or hyphen, just PWD. Okay. What is, what is MING W64? MING. It's main W64. That gives you access to tools, uh, Unix-based tools uh, that get needs. It's a main 64. Yeah, main 64. They have the 32-bit and they have the 34-bit. Uh, modern computers are 64-bit, so you better off with 64-bit. Main 64. Yeah, main, main W64. So main W. Yeah. Just come in W. It says command not found. Um, command not found? Yeah. Uh, PWD, like you see mine here? Yes, I did. Hmm. Okay. So command on top, not. yeah, on, on your, your screen, do you see that main W64? Do you see that? Because you may be, you may have a different prompt. Are you seeing the main W64 like uh, the, the professor has on his screen? No, I don't you see look? that. Okay, that means um, you don't. You are, you are not. No, 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 I do. I do see main 64. I do see main 64. Main 64, and you see the dollar, the dollar sign, right? Yes. You see exactly. the prompt. Okay, now type something like date, D A T E, and put it in D A T E. Okay. Yeah. It came out with something. 
Give me, give me a date, yes, give me a date. Cool. Then, then the PWD should work. So try that. It should be lowercase. Linux is case sensitive. The PWD, it accepted it. Good, yeah, because it's case sensitive, so be careful. Okay. So your next is this git config space dash dash global space user that name space your username. Git config. Hit enter. <laughs> okay. Did you do that? No, get config. If, if you're struggling, you can copy it from the chat. So I put I put two things. Maybe I can change. Let me put the, let me put the chat and copy it. Yeah, yeah, and and then change Emma Paris to your name. Change the things in code. Yeah, so that there's a. Username config and the email config. Uh, okay. Um, to, to save time, if you can share your screen so we can see what you're doing, that will also help. Or else we, we could, we could, uh, cause, um, don't worry, do you want, do you want to do that or you want to move on? Move on? No, it, I, it worked, it worked. It worked. Can I, can I share my screen? Yeah, can I share my screen quickly because I'm on it Mac? Worked. It accepted the, 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 the command you, you, you just sent me. This is a live question, right? Yes, this is a live question from Temi. Yeah. I'm on Mac and I'm, I download the package, but then it's not opening. It's not allowing me to actually open the Git um, application on my on my okay. computer. Um, Let me see okay. if you can share. Sure. Continue. So I'll just start from the beginning. I downloaded the binary installer, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Download. Okay, open that. Yeah. So okay. after. Check one of them must be done already because you this is not your first time to download. Can yeah. Not down here. This I year. think you have it. You have it in the download folder already. Yeah, I should. So, but I might have gotten rid of the um download package because oh. it wasn't working. So, one second. Yeah, this was it. I think. And it says, cannot verify this app is free from malware. So then Google told me to go to my, can you still see my screen? My screen? Yeah, I can see, I can see. Okay, system preferences, and then go to security and privacy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I only see uh, the page that you download. I don't see. Uh, okay, one which... second, let me, let me just wait for it to, sorry. Sorry, everyone. It should almost be done because I'm pretty sure I got rid of all of these. Okay. 
One second, two more seconds. Yeah, okay. I think it's done. So then opening, and then I click the package right here. Can you still see it? Let me. No, I don't okay. see. It. You need to sh share your screen. Okay, one second. Let one me. Screen. Then I will be able to see. Uh, so now it asks yeah. me, this is click the package. Mm -hmm. And then it says this, Mac OS cannot verify that this app is free from malware. Are you seeing that? No, I don't see that, but don't worry about it. Just click OK and but I don't see that. Okay, let me sh let me I have to because I think I have to keep sharing. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah, your windows that would be good. Yeah. And uh -huh, then, yeah, click OK. Um so it doesn't uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, go to your system preference. Go Apple, yeah, system preference, security and privacy. Yeah, oh, can you I, see this? Oh, yeah, yeah. You see here, open anyway, click on that. Yeah, open anyway. so I click on that, okay. mm -hmm. and yeah. it still says cannot yeah, click verify. Open. Click on open. Yeah, then, click continue. Yeah. yeah, install. Install. Yeah, I and mean then your password. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. But, I've, yeah, I was doing this, and now. Now you're done. You are using Mac. You can move it to the trash. Now open your terminal. Okay. The terminal. Git is binding. Is embedding that. Yeah. Open that. Yeah. Type PWD. PWD. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, do, now do the configuration. Your your username, your email. You know how to do that. Not really. So just like type in what I want my username git, and email. Yeah, git space config. See, yeah, space dash 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 global global. Uh -huh. Space user that name user that name space. Put your name in there or use your name name that you uh, want. Yeah. Enter and then hit enter. Okay. Okay. Let me see what is that. Uh, I will put your name in quotation. Let's see. Okay. So type this again. What I just typed. No. I'll uh, hit the uh, up arrow. Okay. The up arrow. Yeah. Now. Gotcha. Uh, put uh, that in quotation. Use the name space. Sorry. Ah. You yeah. can delete it. Go to the beginning and then yeah, space, yeah, in quotations. Uh git config dash dash. It's not a git repository. Yeah, we know it's not a git repository. Um okay, try to go to the desktop. Try type uh CD, CD desktop. CD, I wanna see uh, space desktop. Yeah. Okay, so um, maybe close this and open again. I want to see what's up. Close it. Let me quit. Yeah, terminal. Yeah, quit it and then open terminal. Yeah, so git config. Git config. Space, um, dash dash okay. global. No, there is no space between dash and global. Uh, global. global. Yeah. Space. User. User dot name. Mm -hmm. and Space. Quotation. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now okay. do the same thing for email. Git config okay. dash dash user dot email your email. Git config dash dash user dot uh, email. email. Mm -hmm. uh, Hit enter. Now your Git is configured because you are on the desktop. I want you to type M, M, K. No, K. Only one M, sorry. Oh, M, M K. Yeah. D, D as David, I mm -hmm. R. I R. Mm -hmm. And the space. Mm -hmm. uh, Introduction to Python or Vasti, Vasti Fall 2022. Yeah, Vasti V A 
D V A D V A D S T I S T I S T I twenty twenty two. Okay. Yeah. That's the twenty twenty two. So this folder, yeah, enter. So okay. this folder will be on your desktop. If you look, you will see. Then once when we start opening the Jupyter notebook, you will go in there and then open it. Okay, uh, like CD or whatever. Yeah, everybody should open a new folder at your preferred location. If you want to put in the desktop, CD to desktop, and then open a new folder there. Everybody. Yeah, so you all set. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. I, I was okay. confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you can stop sharing so that I can. Uh, I did. Is it still showing? Oh, okay, so maybe I have to share. Yeah, the video is here. So I'm with you right now. I've caught up with global. Okay, yeah, I did that. And no I hyphen did. before Git, no hyphen. No, no so hyphen. Is, no is, hyphen. Was everybody well, able to configure the Git? Everybody was able to install an account. I can forward this a little bit instead of uh, staying at these locations. Yes. Okay. No, it's not even letting me type anything again. It says end. Oh, uh, you want to share with me? After you type uh, the okay. first, uh, let me. Can you share your 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 thing with me, your your window, so that I can see? Or oh, was that video, video recording questions or live questions? Maybe it was a video. Yeah, I okay. think it, it might have been a video. Yeah, it might have been a video. Yeah, just uh, if anyone has a question, just raise your hand. Uh, so. Configuration. Yeah. Yes, he gave my username dot email work on the project you can do changes some of them are good some of them are bad you, if you think that you delete something that you like you can go back git will lay out to do that but that's another uh could be another course by itself right basically it's like it's the version control tool yeah it's like a dot prompt mm -hmm. okay so um i'm here i wanna go to academy city academy there so from here um so if you create your folder named vasti then you can go to the folder now by typing cd vasti 2022 right cd means change directory move me from my current location and take me to the location what which name is academy in your case it would be vasti 2022 I'm going to another folder. I'm just sitting to, I could just, just go there directly, but I'm doing step-by-step step here. Because if I go to uh, this academic, if I wanna know how many fo folder are there or file, I will do LS. You say I have IT, I have Zoom, I have my folder also, right? So I wanna go to IT, I'll do CD IT. Once I tap I and then hit tab, it will complete it, right? If I go inside IT, it will tell me everything that I have inside there, right? And then I can choose what I want. I want to go to Vasti, right? So I will say CD, uh, V, and then tab, it will complete it. V, A, tab, it will complete it. Now I'm here, I'm ready to open my Jupyter Notebook by typing J U P Y T E R space, N O T E B O O K notebook and then hit enter. Okay, Professor Dubia, but that that's 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 because you already set up a, a folder called uh, 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 V A D S T I, right? Yeah. So we, we need to set up a folder within within the within within desktop uh, to accept to accept the the files we're, we're putting in there. Yeah. You, you don't even have to come to uh, desktop. You just go to the place where you want to be. Let me close this and open again. Uh, close this now. Yes. So I want to open my git bash again. 
Oh, not the GOI. Quick. Git bash. So now, uh, let me make it uh, bigger a little bit. All right, so I don't even have to go all of it down to the folder that I want. Once I'm on the desktop, I can also type Jupyter Notebook and then hit enter. It should open a Jupyter. This is one way to open a Jupyter Notebook. All right, so then I can go to Academy, then I can go to IT, then I can go to Basti, uh, V right here, then I can open a Python file. But now let me go back. So once you are here as a beginner, right? Once you are here, you need to open a folder if you didn't have one. There is a, uh, you click on new and then uh, click on folder, right? So you can create a folder and then that folder will not have a name. You see here is a name. Then you click check mark here, right? And then uh, you need to, um, you see is untitled, you click on it and then you can rename it, right? So you can rename this folder here, let me see, why? So is, is everybody here so far? Yes. Sorry, no, I'm yes. not. No, not either. Was everybody able to open a Jupyter Notebook? No. Sorry. Yeah, when I type in the Jupyter Notebook, I have an error, like uh, a command not found. OK, maybe uh, you write the usual Jupyter. It's, it's fine spelling. Let me close this. Let me close my, it's a, it's, the spelling is funny. It's not like uh, the, the usual one. Sorry, where, where do I open the Jupyter Notebook from? From, from your, uh, from your uh, uh, Git Bash. Oh, from Git Bash, okay. Yeah, so that's one thing, like I just said, but uh, uh, let me close this and then open it again. No, it's a Jupyter Notebook, not found. It's not found? So. Okay. Shouldn't we, shouldn't, I mean, shouldn't we have downloaded Jupyter before we can reference? No, it? no, 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 no. Oh, okay. uh, it's uh, it's inside an corner already. So uh, one way, let me do this. So go to your uh, search box, type Anaconda. Let's do that first. And then you will see the green circle. Everybody's there. I want to click on it. Anaconda green circle. Yeah, click on that. No, I don't see the green circle. You don't see? No. No. Anaconda. Yes, there's the green circle, correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. Click on that. It will uh, open. Okay. Yes, yes, it did. It did. Yeah, click on that to you know to open it. It's initializing. Right. Mm -hmm. Because this is your first time, then it takes some time, right? So, mine's open. Can you see sorry, mine? Sorry, I, f I found Anaconda and the... Uh, Click on it. Um, okay, I'm there. Okay. Okay, so, uh, you see Jupyter Notebook is here already. Is even, you can launch it from here. Jupyter Notebook. Okay, Jupyter yeah. Notebook. Okay, okay. You see, okay. Anaconda come with all these. Right? Like if you, you, know, you want any of these, R Studio, Orange, you name it, PyCharm. So you here you click on launch. Here we click, click on Notebook. I did, I did, yeah. I did, I did. Okay, so you should open. It looks like a browser, but you don't need an internet connection for this. You don't need it. Right, so you are here, okay. then you can, uh, you see this uh, new, you click on new and then open a folder. Click on new and open the folder. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I opened uh, Anaconda, but I I don't have the Jupyter book. I only have R Studio 
the oh I I got it. I I saw it. Okay. So I just click launch. Yeah, click on launch. Okay. okay. Sorry, I, I again I saw I see I can type in Anaconda in my search functions search function and it brings up a couple of uh, things. Yeah, you have to do project on Anaconda project Anaconda navigator Anaconda client which one? An oh, Ana navigator navigator the uh, one that have a green circle yeah. Okay, Anaconda navigator three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will take a few seconds. My okay. once it's yeah, it will look like a browser, but it's not actually a browser. You don't need an internet connection to open Egyptian notebook. So once you get there, oh. then you that's what we do. Yeah, you go to new. This is mm -hmm. it this takes is, some uh, time. Go to view, and then what do I do? Oh, okay. So click on folder. Folder. Mm -hmm. New folder. Okay. And uh, right, so you got your folder here. Now inside a folder, you can. Uh, uh, I, clicked the, I clicked on folder. Nothing happened. Yeah, there is nothing. So inside a folder, you can you click new, and you can open a file. That will be Python. You click on Python. Python three. You click on that. Okay. Right. Click on. I'll click on file, and then what do I do now? Python, you click on Python 3, Python 3. Where is Python 3? New, you are inside the folder. No, folder didn't open. Yeah, uh, there is nothing in there. You click on now, uh, you go to new. Uh-huh. And then you click on uh, Python 3. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Got you, got you. Got you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I've caught up. Okay. So once you open it, it will say untitled. Yes. Right. So you can change it to whatever name you want. Intro to Python. Right. So okay. So you then you click on the name right here. Then you will see the name has changed. I I, I clicked on I clicked I put the, I put Python in that in that in that window, but nothing happened. What do I do now? Uh, when you click on Python three, let me come here again. Can you see my mine? So I can I come to new. Yeah, I clicked on Python. Yeah, I clicked on that. Yeah, Python three. Yeah. So this is what will happen. Look, this right. this is what will happen. Then you come up here. Right, and then click on the title. You say untitled, click on that. Oh, oh, oh. Then, once you click on that, then you can change it. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, sorry, Musa, I'm still back where uh, I'm dead. I just got into Jupiter and I uh -huh. see all the. Uh, um, where was it now? Uh, I a bunch of. You have a bunch of files, right, in folders. Yeah, one is, uh, okay, hang on a second, that's mine. Um, yeah, a bunch of files, I don't see four, there's like 3D objects, Anaconda 3, contacts, desktop, and so on. Mm -hmm, that's fine. Just uh, ignore that, go to new. Is there in, oh, here, yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah. you see, that's what I will yeah. see. I see. So you come here, go to new. Right. Yeah. So if you didn't create a folder, this is one way to create a folder. You click on folder, then okay. uh, you will you have to come to you because it will be untitled. Right. Oh, untitled folder. Okay. Yeah, untitled folder. Right. And right. then. Yeah. So. You want me to rename it or? Yeah, you can rename it. Uh, what's a good name for? Python. Um, Name. Uh, you can say Python crash course. Yeah. My introduction to Python. Yeah, introduction to Python would be a good one. I clicked on name. It doesn't allow me to do something. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to follow. Right click. Right click. Right click it. Click 
click on name, it doesn't do anything. No, no, you, you, to change the folder, you've got to go to the folder and click on the folder, uh, right click on the folder itself. I, okay, I do. But it doesn't do anything. Just this open link and you tab. Well, I, I think you may want to do what Professor Dubia said earlier. Just go up to where it says, where it says the title and change the title. Okay. On the top, on the top of the screen, where it says Jupiter. Yeah. And it will say untitled. Click on, click on that and change the change the title to whatever title you want to. Okay. I'll see that right now. Because I I see the untitled folder. Yeah, click on that. Okay, and then it brings me to the untitled folder. It's just a notebook list is empty. And then click change the change the change the, 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 the put a new title. No, try clicking new yeah, again. Right. So once you're in the untitled folder, click see. new well, again. I mean, and here, then for type example, on. on your screen, you, it also says untitled folder. Where would you change the name then? Here? Once once you click on the untitled folder, there'll be a, a little box will open up below. And in the little box, you put your, your, your title. Okay. Hang on a second. Um. Yeah. I don't What's see that. So. Oh. Okay, so I think try clicking new twice. Like I'll save, right? So uh, if you've not seen that, try the file save. Uh, but when you click on the title, uh, I don't uh, see title here uh, as an option. Or, or do a right mouse click and see. Right mouse, and then you can rename the new. That, that's also yeah, right click. And then rename. <clears throat> to give you a set of options and then select rename. rename can you do that here and show me where you would do that here? Yeah, yeah. If you could show us that would be good. Yeah, I click on that name down the name up. I see that too, but does that change the num the name? Uh, I don't see uh, so if you click on the untitled folder. So right. let's say in your case it was a file. Yeah, do a right mouse click on that and see that yeah where your case is. Try that and see. I don't know what what you are doing. Um, it just okay. doesn't. Okay, I mean we can we can go on. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's file go on. Will be on yeah. Right. So and then, so anyway, do I need to uh, put something into the untitled folder? Uh, yeah, you have to click on it. Uh, we're going to open uh, what is the untitled. So I got many untitled here. So I, I think I will delete this. Uh, I'm going to delete this one. So you, if you want to delete a, something that you want, you just check mark, you click on it, and then come up and then say delete it. Right. So you got, yes, I want to delete it. Right. I'm sure. So now, uh at this one i just create this if i want to rename it all i need to do is to click here did you do that you come here when you create it, it's an untitled you check mark and then you come here did you do that and then change the name right and you can change the name Professor Heimbock, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? No, I'm done. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I found it now. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. You, you do it now, right? Okay. So, let me see this. Uh, this is even empty. So right here, I rename the folder. Then I will open a new Python. Right, I'll Good click. Python. Yeah, Python, and then. It will uh, bring me here again. This is uh, this is untitled. Then you click on untitled, right? Then you will say intro, right? 
Python. And then click on the rename. So this is one way. So second way. The third way is using uh, the Anaconda prompt. Uh, we use Anaconda Navigator. You could also use the Anaconda prompt. If you type Anaconda, there will be a dark skin look like a command line. Right. So from there also, you could uh, uh, open Jupyter Notebook. You type G P G U P Y T E R Notebook and then hit enter. This should open Anaconda also. Right. Yeah. And then the same thing again. You can open folder and rename the folder. Right. For example, I have uh, this unnamed untitled folder at check mark. Let me come back. Come here, rename it. Uh, Python folder. So intro. For example, oh, that exists already. All right. Okay, so once I I do the error and turn on the folder, when you remember this was going on, or oh, it's open. Okay, because I got something there. Yeah. In anyway, so um. Once you are here, right, then uh, you can uh, go to new again and then click on Python. Then you have your uh, Python uh, Jupyter Notebook available to you. So I got some uh, untitled uh, folder, a lot of them, so I can uh, get rid of some of them. Uh, this, right, that. Okay. So we learned three ways to open a Jupyter Notebook. I think some of these, I just close it. So we use three ways to open a Jupyter Notebook. Let me close the whole thing now. So we, we use gates to navigate through our folder and then open a Jupyter Notebook. We also use Anaconda Navigator to open it and I use Anaconda Prompt to open our Jupyter Notebook. So you are free to use any method that you want. Right? You can just directly go to Anaconda and then launch your Jupyter Notebook. So now let's uh, go inside our Jupyter Notebook. We already rename it, right? We rename our Jupyter Notebook already. So I'm going to launch it from here again. Here, I didn't have to create new one. I'll just go to where my folder is. So desktop, academic, uh, IT, uh, varsity, that's it, right? But again, I wanna open a new uh, thing because I don't wanna uh, read the code to you. I wanna do live coding. So I will open a new uh, new full file. And I give, so today's uh, three, three, 22 intro to Python. Uh, so if you, you use dates, uh, this is one way for you to have a conflict of name, you know, the day, the, the month, the year. So it's one way you don't get a conflict of names, right? So today we are going to uh, uh, learn how to create additional cells. So once you open a Jupyter Notebook, right? Uh, once you are inside, it becomes green. Everybody should see green. But when you click outside, it becomes blue. Then when I press, in fact, let me put one here. So yeah, when I press A, it will create a cell above it. I click outside the cell that contain one. And I want to press B, it will create a cell below it. B for below, A for above, right? So if I want to merge the cell that contain three, merge to the cell that contain one, 
I will go to edit. I will say merge cell above. So they become one cell. Right. If I want to merge to this, I will go to edit again, merge cell above. So it become one cell. If I want to delete it, I would just press X. Are we in the same page? Yes. I don't see how you create a separate piece. I'm only. Okay, so let's say I have this uh, cell here. I contain one. Yes, I did. Okay, I, I will go outside the cell. I come here. You see this? I, after the in, you gotta okay. click okay. out, you know, behind okay. the in. Okay. So it becomes blue. Once okay. it's blue, I want you to press A. It will create a cell above it. Select A. Mm -hmm. You press A only. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Got you. How do, sorry, how do I get how do I get to uh, to the end in the first place? I mean, I have the I have the folder there, but how do you, how did you get to the edit functions? The edit oh. function. This so one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we open a new. From here, you op you go to new. I did. Click on Python three. Oh. Yeah. When you click. Click on Python 3 and you created the 3.3.22 intro to Python. Mm -hmm. How did it become a folder on its own? What did you do? Did you just hit enter or what? Yeah, I just rename, I click on the rename, that's it. Okay. I did the same, but it's not creating a new folder. It's actually, it's a file. so. Let me do one more so I can come here. Uh, I'll create a new one. So it become like this. Did you see this? Yeah. Then you come to untitled. I just change it, uh, right? So this is a three, I'm gonna do 22. So three, three, intro to Python. Oh, okay. So you, you click on the untitled at the top. Yeah. And then click on rename. rename. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm going back to my original uh, thing. So once you open it, then you should, you should come with one cell that is ready for you to code. I think I uh, got a lot of messages in the chat. Let me see. Um, the Jupyter notebook, the same in the Mac. I think I, I had to show, or I would go through, for those who use Mac, should I show the, uh, the slides, how to do it, the steps? I think we should do that before we start coding. So this is how you open Jupyter notebook. This is how you open, uh, add more cells, delete cells, and uh, and uh, put up cell together. So now let me switch back to Mac, right? How to install this thing on Mac computer. So I'm gonna close this for now. Uh, I have my thing here. So I want to share this uh, PowerPoint for you, with you. So how to install uh, both Git and Anaconda on Mac, right? So first let's learn how to install Git. Same thing, you go to your web browser, you, you know, search for Git or Git download. If you use a Mac, it will, uh, it will automatically select your you know, operating system for you. Or you can go to this website, right? git right dash cs scm.com it is a free so you don't have to pay you don't even have to sign for an account so once you get there you download it you will see this screen you will see this screen click on download 
Git is like a is like it's like a Unix code, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when when I when I was when we were at uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, we asked them what's one thing that they want the new hire to know. They want uh, they want to they said uh, if possible uh, they they want to see the new hire to know some type of version control, right? Feel a little bit comfortable with uh, our version control system uh, because we'll be collaborating with uh, you know teammates. And uh, Git is a you know the most popular version control. Right? I know some people use Audit, but I like Git. Right. So if you are here, uh, then click on download. And then I do recommend you to click on uh, this binary installer. Click on the installer. You have a lot of options like a homebrew, Mac ports, but this is the one that will give you less headache. Right. You come to binary binary installer click on installer from there so if i'm too fast let me know those who are using mac so once you do that you will see this windows then you gotta click on downloads click on download And then after you click on download, it will take you to this. It will uh, the download will be in your download file. You need to click on this orange box here, right? Are we in the same page, Mac people, Mac user? Let me look at the chart. Okay, so Shimini, are we in the same page? Okay, so once you click on this orange box, uh, then uh, it will take you to this. Right, you 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 allow the installation to continue. Sending you a message. Did you send your message in the chat box? Okay, can you talk about it later? GitHub for more. Oh, GitHub? Um, the, I don't have a GitHub thing for these. Uh, for this course, I think uh, someone else might be able to do that. So this is the version control system that will allow you to manage file. In fact, some people even write uh, code from there, run code from there, right? You will manage file, you know, you will, you will easily uh, push your work from your local repository to a remote repository like GitHub. You can also pull, right? It allow you to pull from your uh, remote repository to your local repository. It will allow you to share stuff with your, uh, let's say you're working in team, allow you to collaborate. And uh, the most important part is a version control. You can uh, go back uh, in time to get the earlier version if you want. Um, so once this is done, you can uh, do the configuration that we did Right. Uh, GitHub, think about GitHub is like a, a web, like a host, is a remote host for, you know, uh, your, for your, your project. It's remote, like in the cloud, right? And a Git is a tool that will allow you to uh, control, uh, in fact, you don't need GitHub, you can use Git on your local machine only to manage your file, right? Okay, so once this is done, once you install this, then you need to configure it uh, 
your Git like we did it earlier uh, with, in, with Windows. All right, so user.name, your username, user.email, your email, and then you can check if the configuration was successful by running this code. Okay. So once you've done you can now open a uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh Betty, Betty, what, what can't you open? Yeah, I cannot open this git. You know, uh, it's giving me I downloaded it, but it's giving me that. Uh, the Safari cannot open it because it's uh, it cannot uh, identify the source. Yeah, yeah, you gotta open it anyway. Uh, I think you need to. You use a Mac, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's 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 why. Uh, let me stop this and then you share. You share with me. Uh, okay. I think this that's the same problem that the young lady has earlier. Share your nice. thing with me. Let me stop the video. What I found. So you want me to share my screen with you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, one minute. Actually, you know what? I can go back to my um, Windows and do it. This is a little complicated to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, because uh, your Mac is uh, is good, but it's, it's it just it complicates things. Yeah. Um. I don't know what step you are, but if it's uh, it doesn't trust the the source of the thing, you go to your sys your Apple icon, system preference, security okay. and privacy. Okay. And then. And then uh, and then enter your password and then say allow anyway. Okay. You allow it anyway, then you know. Because it says Mac OS cannot verify that it's mm -hmm. happy free from malware. So yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Okay. So I have to go to the my systems and uh, and just uh, tell it that allow it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 I'll okay. Do I think we can take a break now. Ten minute break. We come back at uh, twelve forty. Uh, so if you want to discuss that during the break, you are welcome, but, uh, okay. Okay. okay thank you. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah, hello. Uh, last last week, week during, during the break, break uh, we, we took, took the opportunity, opportunity for introduction. So, so if, if you were not, not here last, last week, week or, or if you were here, here but did not, not have the opportunity, opportunity to introduce yourself, yourself you can, can do so. Now, there is a lot of echo. Yeah. Hey, John. Yeah, we have a lot of echo. I think I think most people need to mute themselves. So uh, if you're if you're not on uh, mute, please mute yourself. Thanks. Okay. okay. Hello. 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 I, I think I think whoever the the administrator needs to mute everybody because it's like yeah maybe that's where the echoes come from. I think everyone is muted. Not quite. No. Demi oh. and Ujawal Shah. Yeah. Hold on, let me see. There we go. There we go. Okay, try again, Dr. Quajan. You have to unmute yourself, though. There okay, hello, 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 Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. okay, so, so maybe, maybe uh, as you, you can, can pass on, on the what I was saying is, is for people, people to use, use that time to introduce themselves. themselves. Are you asking for people to introduce themselves? Yeah, yeah, we did that, that, that last, last week during, during the break. break. So, so if, if anyone, anyone will have, have the chance, chance to do so, so just, just you turn your camera on and, 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 and the same center, center to introduce yourself. yourself. Okay. Okay. okay, we can do that. Um, just to let you know that this is Stacy. I'm back. <laughs> Sidebar. No, it's it's me. Okay, okay so, so why don't you turn the, the camera, camera on and then start off with the, the brief introduction. introduction? All righty. Um, I'll go through them. Um, is this sweetie uh Kahu? Yes, hi, good morning. Morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And one, one, one sentence. sentence uh, uh, of why you your find this, this, this? Or why, why this, this is important to you? Why the data science training is important, important to you? I think there's so much echo. I can't really yeah. understand. But I think you're asking me why am I here? <laughs> And if that is what you're asking, then it's very early. You're right. Why am I putting myself through this? Well, I am a research fellow now with the Aim Ahead program. And um, although I've kind of run through some of these programs before, if you don't use it all the time, you forget. And then everything seems new again. And then, of course, there's so many changes. So this I'm treating this like brand new experience and I'm fumbling through things as well but I think I'm where we're at at least I've got something working and I'm ready to code in Jupyter notebook so I had done the anaconda up uh, whatever installation over the weekend and then I got stuck so luckily being here I'm moving on again so thank you so much, everybody, and I appreciate your struggles. And I also encourage you to ask for the help now, because if you don't, you just keep getting stuck again. So thank you and everybody for your patience. Uh, I'm done, I think. All right. Thank you. Um, next is uh, Mario Flores. Uh, let me just... Uh my video. My name is uh, Mario Flores. I'm a assistant professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, I already have some experience with Python, but I think uh, uh, it, it would be a very good to have a refresh and to also learn from the bottom the use of tools like GIT and the different concepts that will be covered in this in this training. So happy to be here and also i think it's very important the networking to be able, be able how others use their their data what problems they're trying what questions they have so thank you
All right, thank you. The next is uh, Deepa Betty. Hello, um, um, I'm an associate professor at Tuskegee University. And uh, I have no idea of Python or R, like I have a little bit of idea of R, but I'm a breast cancer researcher and you know, I do like uh, basically um, basic science, but I'm moving to translational. So I think for that, I really need to learn some programming language to, in order to get, uh, you know, um, in order to accumulate the um, patient data set, in order to make sense of the patient data set, which I'm really um, like working on. So yeah, I'm very interested in learning these uh, languages. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have um, Dr. Kwabi Adel. Hi, good morning. Uh, let me get put on my video. Hi, yes, so this is Dr. Kabiadu here. I'm a cancer biologist and uh, I'm here to learn data science so I can mine some of the publicly available uh, science databases. So the, I started coming last week, uh, but I'm very, very new to this. So uh, it's a lot to learn. Thank you. Okay, next is Timmy Lola. Afobali. Afalabi. Hi. Afalabi. Yeah, Tammy's fine. Um, I basically I want to become a data scientist and be able to, you know, analyze the data, make like data driven solutions. I work a lot with data now in my current role as a research associate, um, just looking at how data can be used to inform, um, you know, health disparities, access to transportation, um, COVID nineteen solutions. Um, and it's it's made me realize that being able to actually analyze the data myself would be really helpful for my future career in um, anti-corruption, state capacity building in West Africa and such. So happy to be here. All right, next we have uh, Juwala Sa. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so I'm also a computer science freshman at Howard University. So uh, uh, I like to do data science and I've done some projects uh, of data science and machine learning too. So uh, I want, I'm in this class because I, I, I want to learn more and like I want to do hands-on project and you know connect with people and like make friends. Uh, and that is why I'm here. And my other class is right now, so I need to like uh, switch to other class because my other computer science class is right now, so I need to rush. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Next we have Isaac Darkwa. Isaac, are you there? Okay, well, next we have Ramon Kelly. All right, next we have uh, Lee Jai Tan. Okay, they said, hi everyone. Sorry, I do not have a mic or cam on my desk. My name is Lee Ja and I am a clinical development Howard fellow in pharmacist by training. This training is important because I believe it can correlate to my work in clinical trials. Great to have you here. And our next person says I'm at the library. They are a public health professional, epidemiology trained, 
Next, we have Edmund Amanya. All right, well, next we have Ronald. Ronald, are you there? All right, well, next we have Brianna Whitfield. Brianna, are you there? All right, next we have Francis Talori. Uh, good morning, all. I'm Francis Tulori from Jackson State University. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I can say I have data science at the point six. I taking this workshop as a professional training, hoping to take me to the next level of proficiency. Thank you. All right, thank you. Great to have you here. Next is Portia. All right, that's equation. Can you put what you just said in the chat? All right, we have Ngozi that was just popped up. Ngozi, do you want to go next while uh, Dr. Equation yes. is? <laughs> Okay. Hi, my name is Dr. Ngazi Wajaki. I'm currently a research fellow at Howard and Santa Fe, and I, I took a Python class, like one class in college, and I never went back, but I'm back to learn something, and hopefully this will progress me forward. Thank you. All right, great. Happy to have you here. Okay, so I guess we are ready to continue. So those who do not have a did I have a chance to introduce themselves? Can uh, we can pick up tomorrow? All right, and I guess we are ready to go when you are. Then um, you're done. You can close your uh, your time. Okay. Um, we got error. So let me see. Can you allow it? Is there any way that you can allow it anyway? It's like coming from a, a different source, unknown source, something like that. I suppose. Uh, uh, Is it possible to maximize the screen? Right. Thanks. And it will, uh, you will see this message. At least I uh, think the last time that I did this was the beginning of this month. Right. So I believe it's the same thing for now. So you gotta click on allow. Anaconda. And then you see the place where it's a code, you go there and then you change it to markdown cell, right? And if I run it, you will see it become just a text. If I want it to be smaller, then I will uh, double click on it, right? Uh, my double click is not working here. Um, but if you wanna make it smaller, you do two pound symbol, right? Three, make it even smaller, right? But if you want to just have a bullet, then you say this, right? Uh, installing, so install git, 
right? And then you wanna to be a markdown cell, right? And then you click enter, that's give you a bullet point. So this will allow you to have some notes throughout your code, right? So that 10 years from now, you know what you were doing. Even somebody uh, come after you, they know exactly what you were doing. And then another way to have a text inside your code uh, is this, you don't change the, you don't change of the cell at all. You leave it as a code and then uh, uh, you just uh, you throw to Python. Right, and then you can run this, you don't get any error message because of the end of the pound symbol here, right? So these are important. And then, um, sorry, um, yeah. I must have a, yeah, I must have a call on there instead of the uh, the um, the running sign there. How do I switch that? Uh, this one? Yeah, I, well, uh, no, the next one, where it says in brackets on colon, and then you have that, um, that next sign there. The no, I don't get that either. I don't get that either. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get it? Because mine just says uh, in, what, well, two uh, colon, and then there's nothing happening. Yeah, I, do, I get the same thing too. Do you, do you know what I mean? Are you talking about which one? The uh, install Git or intro to Python? Intro to Python. In front of it, you have that that um, sideways the tri black triangle and the line. I don't have that. So how do I get that? What do I need to click on? I have the same oh, oh yeah, I forgot to let you guys know that. So you need to click on run. How to run a Jupyter notebook? I, yeah. I try. I, I I do that. I click on run and just uh, goes to the next line or adds another line. Intro to Python, right? Okay, well, let me let me put intro to Python in there. Python, and then if I go run, it just switches to the next line. Yeah, same yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's that this sign. is that's normal because we didn't change the, the cell. If you change the cell, and then if you run it now, it will change. So this you is a normal way. Back. Um, if you leave it as a code, this is fine. You don't see anything here, right? That's fine. This is one way because you can have this and then you can have your code inside. You run it, your code will give you the result, but uh, uh, you don't get any error message. But if you don't have this, if you run it, you get error message. Yeah. Right? Okay, but somehow I, I guess I might is actually not running. Yeah, mine is uh, not running. So, you know, I, I'm an intro to Python, but as I said, you you have a uh, that uh, that triangle, that sideways triangle, and the black line there in front uh -huh. of the line. Uh -huh. that, that arrowhead and the, and, the, and the vertical line. I'm not getting that either. Right. Oh, you don't. You're not getting this. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm in front of your cursor. Because the high has. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, what is it? Widget. Go to widget. Uh, okay. What is it? Nah. Embed in uh, okay. uh, let me come here. View view or uh, toggle. Uh, let's see that. Okay, that view toggle toolbar. So dash that hide mine. You see, so now go to view again and then toggle toolbar. Maybe that will make it you will see. No, no. not really. Not really. It also, yeah, it, it could also be that, uh, you see. See the professor has uh, plastic. You see next to where you have the Python icon, where you say next to the logout below that you have the kernel. To the left of that you have plastic. Okay. Yeah. Professor's yeah. kernel is plastic. Yours might not be plastic. So no, make mine, sure yours. Sorry. Yeah, mine is untrusted. Yeah. So make it plastic. Yeah. Make it plastic. Otherwise, you're saying, "Hey, I'm running something that I don't trust." So of course. It's not going to run. It's a risk, right? It's a security risk right. if you don't. Yeah, it is not trusted. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting. I'm not getting this. No. You don't. You don't see uh, uh, run stop this. You don't see them. No, I see that, but I'm not able to get that arrow sign at the, at the vertical bar. Like. Oh, this the, one. The, yeah. That. 
down, 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 there's an the, arrowhead and a line. That sign does not show up. Where right move, arrow. Move down, I'll tell you where to stop. Go, go, move your cursor down. Down, down, down. Oh, down, down. Left, left, oh left. this one. This yeah. yeah. one. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, How did we get that? I came with it. I don't think I did any uh, thing differently. Maybe it depends on the browser. Which browser are you using? I, I'm not sure. I'm um, using. Using uh, Google Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, Google Chrome, same here. I'm using uh, Internet Explorer. So maybe so that's. I'm not using I'm not using Google Chrome, right? So I think I, maybe, I maybe also you may be running you may be running the markdown instead of code. Make sure that when you say insert the code, you see it has to be yeah, I got code. Yeah, it has to be a code. I think Markdown also gives you the right. Oh, no, yeah, Markdown will give you. Markdown, exactly. you don't see. Exactly, exactly. Markdown, you don't see code also, I don't see. Yeah, Markdown, you don't see, but if you come code, then you don't see. I, I don't you have that either. Code. I just I want to code. say I, I'm on Google Chrome and I'm getting what the professor is getting. So hopefully we can troubleshoot whatever the issue is. I don't know yeah. what, what is it that we're not, we're not doing. <laughs> kind of. Okay. Um. In any case, we can run. We can run uh, the cell without this. So by uh, pressing Shift Enter, you hold on to Shift, and then you hit Enter. That will run it. Shift Enter. Yeah. It just adds more cells. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It will add one more cell below it. Um. So we are learning how to comment, how to write comment inside our cell, right? We can have a markdown cell, or we can have a cell, and then we write stuff in there, right? So um, let me copy a text and then just, uh, and then let's say you want to uh, comment, you know, a paragraph, right? So. You want to comment a paragraph, for example, uh, you know, I'm just going to copy, you know, random text, right? So you are here, right? If you want to copy, you uh, you see your question mark, the key that is above your question mark, like a hyphen symbol, you press that three times, right? Uh, so, and then you, uh, let me make sure, oh, it's a markdown cell. Let me change it to code cell. You gotta change your cell to a code cell. And then you press that three times, one, two, three, then you will see that. And then you paste, if you have a long paragraph there, even if it is uh, that, and then you run it, you don't get an error, right? Sometimes you have a, you know, a long paragraph that you want to insert in your code, you can, you know, do it by doing the this three hyphen. If you want to add more comments, if it's just one or two sentences, you can use this, right? This method. So how we can do three dot or three? Uh, is it in between? Oh, your key, it? your keyboard on your right hand side. You see, uh, you see question mark. Yes, question mark. Mm -hmm. And then the keyboard that is above that, you got quotation and then uh, the other one. You got two questions on there. So just press that button three times, then you will get this. Apostrophe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Right. But make sure your cell is a code cell. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you, you can paste, you know, as long as, you know, as many sentences that you want. You won't get any error message, right? The reason why you do that, you don't want to keep typing a uh, pound symbol and then uh, for each sentence is that would take a long time. You just do this and then put your you know comment in there and then that's it. You can run your code, no error. No error. But it's showing uh it's showing two uh two quotation, not oh yeah, two and high okay, quotation mark, okay. 
And what is the difference between trusted and untrusted, I think? Yeah, um, this trusted. Yeah, so so let me come in here a, a little bit. So, so you see trusted, we have the same thing with Kodium, if you are using Kodium. If your environment is not trusted, uh, the operating system, uh, especially if it's like Windows 10, it's, it's saying, hey, I don't trust it, I'm not going to run it. So it's just there as an editor. Because when you say run, you are using the resources uh, on your computer, right? It could be a write, it could be a read, it could be update memory. And so if you don't trust the process that's doing that, then it's a risk. So your computer will say, well, fine, it's there, you don't trust it, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, so the kernels have to be trusted so that it's not like, it's not like a hack, you know, it's not like someone's fake thing that you're running that will zap files from your computer and ship it somewhere. Okay, so this is saying, hey, you know what? People in the Python community trust this kernel. You're not the first one using it. Other people have used it and it hasn't created a problem on their computer. So that's what the trust, uh, trust means. It's, it's just a precaution, it's just a skill you need precaution. Right? Thank you. And also, uh, you're showing some merging uh, in the beginning, uh, merging one cell to another cell. Uh, can you show it again? And also, bullet. Yeah. So the bullet one, how can you get the bullet instead of pound sign? Oh, oh, okay. So if you want to uh, get the bullet, let's I'm here, I'll do star shift number eight. That's star and in space, right? And then I will say, uh second for example. then i will change the uh, cell to a markdown cell right once you do that shift enter or you run it it will be a bullet okay so if i want to create a new cell below this i need to press a because if i'm inside it become blue I click outside become, I mean, inside green. I click outside become blue. Then I press A, it will create a cell above it. If I press B, it will create a cell below it. If I want to delete this cell, I click outside and then press X, it will delete it. I want to delete this, I click outside the cell, press X, it will delete it. Same thing here. Yes, I uh, see a message. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now let's talk about data types. So I want to make that as a title, data types uh, in, uh, in Python. So integers. So we have integers. So I want to do this as a bullet. Integers. So markdown cell. Uh, integers right so integers like uh the word like whole numbers negative side positive side like one right and one plus one so that's an integer right so one is an integer if i just run it just one right i didn't print anything i just run it so one plus three so integers like uh, the wall, it has no decimal. So negative whole number, passive whole number, including zero, right? Those are integers. So if uh, there is a method called in Python called int also, right? If your number is not in integers method, you can use this, it will transform into int, right? So you got integers. One is an example. In addition to integers, we have uh, uh, floats. Think about float as uh, real numbers, right? So it has to have a decimal uh, float. Let me make this a bullet also. So float. Right. So floats like uh, three. 3.14. Right, this is a float. How do I know that? I can check the type. If you say type, what type of thing is this? It will say float. For one, if you type, you look at the type of for one, it will say 
integers, right? Even if I change it to 1.0, then it becomes float, right? So that's the difference between integers and float, right? So numbers, they are all numbers, but this, these don't have decimal symbol. Uh, if you have a integer, they don't have decimal symbol on it, right? But floats can have decimal symbol on it, even now. 3.0, that's also negative 3.0 is a float, right? So even irrational numbers are floats, right? So in addition to uh, that, we have uh, things called, uh, there is a method called float. You can also convert your numbers from integer to float and vice versa. So the next thing is a uh, string. So string. I want to make that as a bullet point. So string is like a sequence of character, right? For example, in Python, uh, if you want to define a, a string, it has to be between quotation. All the string must be between quotation. Uh, for example, you can have a strings in this double quotation, right? So this, you will not have a problem, right? If you check the type, Right, if you check the type of this, it will say strings. Oh. So it's a string str. You can also have it in a single quotation. So let me uh, just uh, say type instead of a double quotation, I have single quotation, single quotation here, single quote, and I run it, it's a string. So you have a choice to use either double quotation or single quotation, right? So space is also a string. If I do like this, and I only have uh, empty space, if I run it, it will be a string. If I add more space, it will still be a string. Right? So be careful, uh, especially with indentation and then stuff, space Python will consider as a string. So, uh, strings, we have a lot of method with strings where we can uh, uh, add strings together, we can uh, split them, right? We can uh, make them a uh, uh, capital case, lower case, and so on, right? But before we do our uh, operation, I mean, uh, with uh, strings, let's uh, uh, do some operation with numbers, right? So with numbers or integers and float, we have additions, right? Like a basic addition. We have multiplications, right? You can easily uh, multiply them by doing using the star symbol. So three times, two times three, we give it six. Two plus three is a five. You can do that. Let me create more cells. And then divisions, let's say 10 divided by, or 11 divided by uh, two, for example. You see the result is 2.5. But there is another division called integer division. So 11 divided by, I'll use divide, divide again. So this is, so I wanna add here, division. Right, so we got this. So this is integer division. So here it will, it will return only five. I will only get the integers part of it. It doesn't return, you know, the decimal part. Throwing up. What if you do 10 divided by zero? Oh, that's undefined. You get error message, right? Unless you, you define some uh, ex expression, you get error. Oh, you see? It's giving me a lot of trouble already. It's a divided by zero error. Right. Zero divided by error. Right. So now, in addition to that division, we have a uh, method called a module. So it will return the remainder of the division. So if I say 11 uh, mod uh, uh, 2, it should return 1. If you divide 11 by 2, uh, everybody get uh, five, the remainder is one. So it will return exactly what's left after the division. 
but this is very important especially when we want to check whether or not a number is odd or even right we use this uh, model function uh, more, uh, this this how it, one what does it mean 11 the remainder if you divide oh, 11 oh, yeah the remainder yeah so this will return the remainder of the division what does hashtag right. so um power so power we use i love power you got questions yes i was just asking what does hashtag means in this um hashtag before a character is like you are commenting right you don't want to run that as a code. okay okay yeah. okay thank you exponent so if i want to take uh uh two to the power one half for example so i will use start two times so star star and then 0 0.5 this means square root of two and then run it right so star star mean power right if i want three square i'll do three star star two that give me nine but why would anyone want to do this? You can do the same thing in Excel, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, you will learn later on that uh, Python has a built-in function called SQRT. That will just do it for you. Right? But uh, this is one way to do it. Okay. So now, Are we good? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have a strings, then uh, we can do a lot of stuff with strings. So uh, we can uh, make, let's say, I will say uh, name equal this. Let's say uh, Musa, let me make everybody lowercase. Right, so there is a method called uh, upper. Right, uppercase will uh, make uh, your character, you know, all uppercase. Right. So you would say uh, name that upper. Right. So you see, it will turn everybody to uppercase. Right. So if you say, uh, so this is upper method. Let me do it here. So title, so you will just make uh, somebody get a message. Uh, I have to do. Yeah, I think so. The presentation will be made available. So now there is another method called um, uh, title. Right. So the title method uh, will uh, change the first character. Right. So I will say name that title. Right. So only M will be capital, everything else will stay uh, as lowercase. So upper, lower. Now there is another method uh, that we call it uh, uh, split. You can split your strings, right? So let's say I have these, I can say email email equal this mdumbia at howard.edu. Right. So if name equal that, then uh, I can split it at the add symbol. I can say email, email that split. So I wanna split at the add symbol. So I gotta specify that, right? say it has been split into two All right are we good All right. 
Okay. Any questions so far? So there is a lot of method uh, we string call um, and we've start with uh, this Python code building block that you will need to this class. What is it? Yeah, this is very basic, right? It's a basic, uh, basic course. Right. So there is a lot of method you can, uh, uh, if you have time, you can uh, search a uh, string method in Python. You know, there is a method called uh, star with, uh, end with, uh, right, and so on, right? <clears throat> uh, there is a, a, another method called length, so L-E-N, for, stand for the length of your, the F of your uh, string. So if I have an email here, Left of my email, I want to know how many. How long is it? It will tell me I have a 19 character in there. Right. So you see, I've been setting this equal to. So this is mean uh, as an email equal this. So I'm defining variable here. Very this is variables. Right. So there is in Python, we have a restriction for variable name, right? There is a restriction for variable name. So uh, you cannot start a variable with numbers or, or special character. You cannot start with that, right? So I cannot say, for example, if I say uh, three uh, M, so three M equal, uh, let's say here, uh, most, I cannot have that. I get error message, right? Even if I use underscore, you cannot start variable with that. You cannot start with uh, a special character either, right? You can say M3 equal that, you don't get error message, right? And then the variable is on the left side, right? You don't wanna say this, uh, you don't wanna say this equal to your, M3 variable on the left and then the value on the right, right? Otherwise, if you uh, do this inside, you might not, your code might not know what this, uh, what the value of M3 stands for, you know, you get an error message, right? So variable on the left, the value on the right. So let me delete this. Any questions so far? Okay, let me look at the chat. Oh, okay, good. Okay, no, no questions. Right, so keep that in mind when you're defining your variables, if you want using numbers that have to be at the, at the end. Right now, I've been printing, I've been now running these, right? Instead of running, you see every time I run, I get outputs, input, output, input, output. So if you don't wanna see that, you know, you can run it. Let's say I would say print, you can print it. If I say print M3, then you don't see, you don't see the output anymore. You will just print it out, it will say Musa. And then you don't see either uh, uh, this, uh, this thing. Let me see here, M3. If I write M3, it will print Musa, but you have quotation. But if I print it, I don't get quotation around it. Right, let me see how questions uh, do we have if I before query if I which file or save file uh Python uh give the notebook automatically save but uh yeah it will automatically save it right if you wanna make sure you can uh, click on the save button here also right. um John, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when uh, will be the, if there is a break in between. If uh, let me know. I don't know anything about that. So, right. Uh, so, if you'd like, we could take a fifteen-minute break. Um, we've we've taken one uh, last week twice. So, if you want okay. to take a maybe a ten-minute break and then come back at one o'clock or fifteen-minute break, and have anybody, everyone, come back at one o five, we can do that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do that. Okay, okay. so 10 or 15. Yeah, uh, we can take a 15 minute break. That's fine. Professor Dubia, can I ask you a question during the break? Yes, yes. 
I think Professor Heinbockel and I have the same problem. Mm -hmm. We, I, I'm following everything you've done, except that, you know, in, in front of each of these, these text boxes, you have that, uh, that the right arrow key and the, uh, the vertical line. Yeah, this one. I tried every single prompt to get that, to get those, uh, I'm not able to get that. I tried, I ran through the entire menu, I done, did everything, I pressed everything. I'm not it didn't show up. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, let, let me save, let me save everyone. So I had the same thing, so I've been able to replicate that. When I use Firefox, I, and I posted that on, on, in the chat, I have my ins with no arrows. And at that point, your, your only option would be to use the keyboard shortcut or use the menu options to, to run the code. Uh, I, I will dig into that, but I'm, I'm sure the professor also I can find it, we'll share that with you. But it's not an error, it's just the behavior of the browser. Yeah, uh, just a conf yeah. Yeah. You can use a shift enter or run. Yeah, <clears throat> that's basically what I had to do. I had to always go up where it says run. Uh, and I don't know, maybe you, you auto, for you, maybe it's automatically set to run when you just hit return. But for me, I actually, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to go up and yeah. hit the uh, the run and then it runs. And then oh, shift run. Hit, hit run. Oh. They want to restart, uh, but it's it's not an error. I mean, it's it's just the functionality of the browser at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you always can use shift enter. In okay. fact, I don't I don't use the left hand side arrow. I will always use shift, shift enter. enter. How, how come you're not able to see my screen when I do a screen share? I'm doing a screen. I'm doing this. Okay, yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not. We we'll see it now. Okay, so hold down, hold down. Yeah, name is not defined because you see above there's no number assigned to. That means you've not run the line. You did not run it. Yeah. Yes. So that, has, that ha hasn't been executed. No, back up, up one more. Name, name yeah. equal. Hey, Shift hey. enter. Yeah, run, run that. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, run now down. you see a number, a number came. Okay. Now it's not letting me. It's not letting me do anything here. Now it's working. Uh, name title, name the title. Okay, because now now that should run. Run run that again because now you have name defined. Line twenty seven. In twenty seven, yeah. We, when when run that, it will go to thirty five. There we go. Now you have that. Okay, so if name okay, yeah, name was, is uh, an object. Yeah. Okay, name is an thanks. Object. That was that was my problem because all the other things I could. I could do here the the right. mathematical formula, but here I didn't know I have to run both lines. Yeah, exactly, yeah exactly. you gotta run okay. all of them. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks very much. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. will stop. And, and, and the trick is to look for the the dot. What comes before the dot? Okay, that is says oh, an I object. See. So, take an object and apply a function to the object. So you gotta to run email object, first. Yeah, email. Okay, run email. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Live and learn. Thanks very much. Okay, Can you cool. now, Professor Dumbia? Yes. Okay, now tell me what I should do. <laughs> okay. Can you see the, the, there's no arrow, there's that, that, uh, the right arrow and the, the... No, I only see the anaconda. Oh. From, you don't ask, ask me to go to Git. I got it from Git. Oh, show me your code. I only see in your window. Type one. one plus one. Plus, plus one. one. Okay. Yeah, and shift enter. Shift enter. Yeah, that one. Right. I don't, need, I don't need the right arrow under that. that, uh, that one. No, you don't need the shift enter work all the time. In okay. fact, I don't use that, that arrow. I don't. I only use shift enter. Got you, sir. Got you, sir. Got you, sir. Shift enter is quicker. We are on the same page now. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm.
if I move it, I want it to be further right, I can say I want M3 to be center, right? I want it to be center like uh, 60 space to the right. So you will see the name should go to that, right? If I move it, I want it to be further right, I can say 100. See, we'll get, uh, yeah. Right, so that's uh, one thing that you can use to modify your printing. <coughs> okay. So I can say X equal um, hello, and then a Y equal uh, welcome, right? And then I can print both X and Y uh, separated by comma. So you can do that. Uh, you can also use this technique when you're printing, we call it the, uh, the format method. So you will, let's say, uh, I will just, uh, let me put this one here, X be my name. And then why is that? So I can now do the following. I will say, hello, I will leave this, uh, the placeholder here, right? So that placeholder will be maybe replaced by my name, right? And then I want it to uh, write welcome, right? So I can do that by saying this, hello Musa, so welcome. Or uh, let me do that one by one. So I have this, I can do this. Uh, hello, welcome, uh, welcome, right? And in this placeholder, I just want it to be, uh, you hold the place for X, right? I want X to come here, right? So if I run this, it will say, hello, Musa, welcome. So let me just put this here run it so this is a placeholder for whatever variable that i want it to be there right you can have more than one placeholder right so any question about this placeholder can you do that one more time so um, again x is musa i can now yes. say is this a live uh, question yes okay because <laughs> i wasn't sure i right, let me see if i have some python here um, hold on one second oh hunter okay so if you have your uh Let me share my whole window with you. Can you see my windows? No, you stopped sharing. Okay, so let me do this. Uh, whole windows. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, open it, because I don't have anything open here. I wanna open a new Python. Uh, let's stop. So, that's, I have that. So from there, I'll open a Jupyter note. Can you see my uh, Git bash? Yes. Okay. So I don't need this. You see my Git bash. So let me just uh, open one of them here or just open a new one. 
So when I want to, so I say X equal Musa, and then uh, what? Let me do one by one. So if X equal Musa, if I wanna uh, print hello Musa, welcome. So I'll just say here, hello. String always have to be between our, our quotations. And then I want my name to come here. So hello, this place will be reserved for my name. So hello, Musa. And after that, welcome. Welcome. And then I will I need to tell Python where uh which parameter will go to the placeholder format. So I will say X. This X value will go there. So make sure I run it. So Hello, Musa, welcome. So Musa will come in here between these two. So instead of writing that, if I say, I can do two of them. So X equal these, Y equal welcome, uh, welcome, welcome to but Steve, for example, but does STI. So y equal da, so I can now uh, print uh, hello. So I will leave a space of placeholder here, right? And then I wanna leave another placeholder here. Um, if I wanna add another text after varsity, I can add that too. But let's say I wanna say hello, my name and a welcome to varsity. So I will say here that format, and then, so the first is X and then the second one is Y. So let me run this first and then say, hello, Musa, welcome to Basti. So if I want uh, a new line, if I want welcome to new line, to go to a new line, I will do this. Uh, it's my new line, right? Hello, Musa, welcome to Basti. Okay, you get it? Yes, thank you. So let's go back to the video. Can you see the video, everybody? My number, everybody, can you see the video? I'll just say number equal three. Right, so I can use the same thing. Yeah, you, but you here I will call instead of that, just let me call this one three. So if I wanna print, I would say, hello, uh, my name is Musa and then my number is three, right? Oh, somebody got a message. I did not return Musa. Oh, you have to set uh, X equal Musa first, right? X equal Musa, right? And then, hello, placeholder. And then after that, welcome. And then after the quotation symbol, that format. But yes, it, it has a hello, hello. Uh, make sure your X is not equal to, it should be hello, Musa, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh it, yeah, I got extra. It does do it. What? Yeah, it does okay. work. It does work for me with my name. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not yeah, so only one hello, right? Because I, I initially had the, one of the variables set to hello. Maybe that's why. Or it should say only one hello, right? So instead of having empty, you can now uh, you can uh, 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 you can have uh, something in there. Right, and then when you go to uh, format, then you have to specify the value of those parameters. Right, so let's say here, this is the, and then Y, let me have it, this, let me have Y here. So Y equal three, for example. Right, so I can say, set the following, let me delete this. So I want two placeholder now. I want to use two placeholder. So I will say my name is Musa. Instead of Musa, I will have a placeholder here, right? 
and my numbers is right my number is i'll have a placeholder here is three right and then that format then i will have x comma y so the order does matter x mean so if first x that would be here the second number in the tuple will come here right so let me run this oh print i gotta have a close parenthesis here this is is and welcome uh what is this did that change let me run this okay so you see is a number three as uh are uh, created right so you need to have space right you need to have space between them all right then you will have it my number is three right. so you can have as many placeholders as you want so instead of doing this if you say you want you can have uh you can have a parameter here and then you have a parameter here then in that case the order does matter you can say one equal x and then but this is one i want to change this to two so let's say this parameter two two equal y right so you can do that also right and then run it you get the same thing so you can have it empty you can have it you can have some parameters there and then print it okay, everybody got that Professor Dubia, can I ask you a quick question, sir? Yeah. Um, this is this is this is basic programming, and it, it's fine. I, I mean, I, I I have no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, can just, you can just put your email address in the chat group. I'll I'll log on. Right. So this method will remove uh, the uh, empty space that is on the left, and then I can define S two. The length of S is nine. Look at the length of S one look at this let me look at the length. so if you uh, look at the length of this uh this if you look at the length you will see that it is uh, longer than how many character we have here because of these strings and the string that we have so there is a method called uh you know strip l strip y strip so you mean you you are taking away uh the empty space that they have Right, so for example, I wanna say the first one or L, let's, let me just call it S1. So for S1, I wanna remove the space that is on the left, right? So it will be S1 is equal to S dot L strip, right? So once you do that, you will look at this, let me look at the length of S1 it will be less than s the length of s is nine look at the length of s1 is six right so this method will remove uh, the uh, empty space that is on the left and then i can define s2 is equal s when you remove the empty space from the right r strip then i will look at the left again the length of uh, S2. Look at it. What? Oh, R strip. Right, so that is eight. Right. Then now, if you want to remove all of them together, you just use the uh, the wall strip. So is it called uh, S that strip? And then let's look at the length of that. Right. See, we got exactly the first end of the five letter that we have S P A C. Right. Let me look at the message. Okay. Are we good so far? So if you want, if you want to link into this, you can call this one left because you're doing left strip. You can say left equal this, 
And then you look at left here. Right. You say Y equal this because you're doing the Y strip. And then now uh, right here, the right strip. And then you got it, the same thing. Okay, so we talk about numbers and strings. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is list. Uh, like I said, these are not the only uh, method that strings has. They have a lot of method. Uh, so feel free to visit very many. Right. So a list, right? I used to store, you know, multiple items, right? Like a list of uh, students, a list of uh, uh, courses, a list of uh, grocery item, right? So and then there must be between a square bracket right for example i can have uh uh let's say my first list or my list equal this yeah right so my list equal here i can say orange Right, so uh, grape and what is it? Banana and then so on. So this is a list, is a list of uh, right fruits that I have. And then if I, I type my list, in fact, I only need the three first three character or two and then hit tab, it will it should auto complete it. If I run it, it will give me the exactly list that I have, right? So if I want to add, so let's say here, add. If I want to add a list to it. Right? Add new member to a list, right? So if I want to add a new member to this, for example, um, if I want to, I want the member to be at the end, the release, I will use append, right? But if I want it to be at a specific location uh, in Python, let me, uh, the index start at zero. So this is a location zero, orange is at zero, grape is at one, and banana is two. So if I want uh, the list to be at the end, so it will be at the location three, I can use append, right? Append method, this will uh, add, uh, let's say another, so let me just put um, mango here. Right. And then I will look at my list again to make sure that mango has been added, right? So mango has been added at the end. Right. So if I want it to be added at the location zero, right? So let me show you if I grab it location zero first, but what is I mean? What element that should be? That is orange. Orange is at index zero. Right. So list member at index zero. So at index zero, so you, this is orange, right? If you change it to index one, that will give you, index one should be grip, right? Index uh, three should be our mango, right? So the last element is mango. So if you don't want you know the length of your list, but you wanna get the last one, Right, you use negative one. Negative one will return the last element. The last member of, of the list. Right, so my list index negative one will return the last index, or the last uh, element that is in my list.
so I can also add a, a member using uh, using index. So I can uh, say my list. I want to say my list at index uh, one, for example. I want that to be equal to. Um, uh, let me think another. Uh, let me just say salad. I don't. So grape, uh, orange, mango. All right. So let's say here salad. Right, and then let's print, let's print our list, right? So it's been it change the one that is in the index one. So if you look at it, grape is gone and it has been replaced by salad, right? Because grape was in the, was in the index one. And I use the index replaced by salad. And a lot of message here, do you want to cover? Uh, yeah, we might. I might discuss this with uh, John. Yeah. Right. So that's that. Any question about this uh, operation with least so far? So um, with least, you can, let's say, uh second list second list equal up oh, in that's a second list equal this uh, so i want to have uh uh this meat fish like uh uh Like a seafood. Right. So let's let's set this and I want to add these two together. So there is a basic operation that you can do to add these two. So also my list, just set plus, this will concatenate them. So second list. See it add all of them together. Right. With a simple plus. So let's say you don't want uh, this uh, this uh, seafood in there at the end. You can use the path method. So path method will uh, right will uh, take care of that, right? And then if you can pop using the exact index uh, index. So let's say you want to pop meat, then you gotta uh, say. So let me store this to a list or some list. Right. So I call this one the sum list. You call that. And then I want that sum list. Right. Let me do this here. I want to get rid of one of the items, for example. So I will use path method. Right. If I don't specify if I don't specify uh, an index, then it will remove the last one. In fact, you will see that it will return seafood, right? And if you look at uh, uh, your sum list, you will see that that is gone. Seafood is gone, right? But you can uh, also mention uh, the index. Let's say I don't want meat there. So that's index zero, one, two, three, four. So that will be index four. And I, I will, uh, oh, that pop, right? That pop, pop method, it will remove uh, the meat. If you look at it, the meat will be gone, right? So you can add uh, element two list, you can remove them, right? You can add uh, two lists together. Questions. Um, what did pop mean again? The sum list dot pop. Questions. Questions. So you Question. can also use a, 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 a. So. Yeah. Uh, I was saying, what does the sum underscore list dot pop mean again? The pop. I mean, uh, remove the last last element of the list. Okay. Thank you. Pop, yeah. But if you put uh, if you specify. You know, if you put a number inside the, the parentheses, it will remove the member that is at the index. 
Got it. Okay, thank you. A method called sort, right? So if I was right here, let me run this again. Uh, oh. Yes. Oh, uh, pop, how do you get seafood? Some list pop dot that is only got seafood, not all of them. No, it will just uh, remove the last one if you don't oh, remove if you don't, it. if you don't specify uh, the index. Oh, okay, not specify. Okay, just the yeah. last one. Remove yeah, the by, last one. Huh? Yeah, the last remove one. Yeah, you remove, you remove the last one. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should write that down. A uh, quick question. Do mm -hmm. you plan to cover functions and classes? Yeah, yeah, functions. Uh, I am. But I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not sure if I should do object oriented method. Uh, the reason why I ask is that I think that will be helpful. Um, so I have experience with software engineering. I'm, I have a degree in computer science. And from some of my interactions with people who don't have that experience, they can't write reusable code. And uh, that makes it difficult to work with. Sometimes you have to rewrite some of the things they're doing so that they, they have some efficiency. So if you can do that for them, I think that would be great. OK. All right. Let's see. So uh, you can add a note there, remove the last one. So add sort method. So I'm gonna leave uh, this there. I will set that sort, right? So this sort method will organize your list in alphabetical order, right? Uh, if I look at it. So let me, uh, uh, Store it to a variable, right? So I'll call it a uh, sort list. I have a message again. Sort list equal that. And then when I look at it, what does it look like? It should be in alphabetical order. Sort list. My list that sort. Why is it not printing here? Maybe an intro or how to with uh, reference we have okay all right so let me make sure that my kernel is now let me up because it's not printing anything here usually sort should give me something let me give and take this and my list is defined Some list. Let me clear the kernel. So sometimes you need to interrupt your kernel. So you come here, interrupt it, and then you can restart it, clear all output, and restart it. All right. So I'm gonna come to my list, define my list. So I just run everything. That might be eight. Yeah, you're right um it will split your your list member as a tuple so every member will have his own index every member will have his own index every member have his own index so for example you will have uh you will have orange will have uh, index zero so this is what it will return so you will get orange index zero orange comma zero Right, and then you will have uh, bananas, I mean, salads in the comma one. So that's why we'll do this. is important, especially if you want to uh, look through a list, right? So you can uh, grab both the index and the list member at the same time using the enumerate method, right? So you can uh, say some, some list, some and the for list that enumerate right or you enumerate
enumerate that our summaries right so it, that's what we have you have a tuple you have a bunch of tuple uh, you have a bananas comma zero a fish comma one mango comma two and then so on right yeah it's in alphabetical order right b f m g yeah right, so th there was no need to sort it to a new variables that's exactly. so this okay. is that's influence. good so we did copy we did enumerate uh you will see that this is important especially when you you are uh, looking through a list and it's indexed right uh what else uh, we can do with lists okay so we'll we might come across when we start coding uh about the list now the next thing that i want to mention is a dictionary so dictionaries are just a store key value so every key has a value and then they, are, they will be inside a curly bracket right key value key value key value uh so so gpa 3.8 then let's uh i'm just building manually constructing dictionary right here this is an example of a, a, a dictionary right so key value so the first these are the keys and then these are the value keys value key value right then right so this is how you define a dictionary. They have to be between curly brackets. Right. So let's say 3.2. Right. So if you want to grab an element in the dictionary, you have to use the key, right? You have to use the key method. So let's say uh, name GPA. So if I want to uh, have a value 3.7, I have to grab a mic also and if you run your name gpa again then you will see that she is there right rose is here right oh okay mm -hmm. so you can uh, use a uh, pop method also in car in the in the dictionary you can use pop you can also use uh a copy method with dictionary, right? And I know one of the most important things with dictionary is items. If you are looping through a dictionary, so uh, there is a, a things called so name GPA. This is very important that items, items, right? This is very important. So you will return your keys and value as a tuples. Tuples, key value, key values, key values, right? So this is similar to. Uh -huh. When you can use curly bracket, when you can use uh, the third bracket. So what is the different? I know you use curly brackets, and now you're using the that third bracket. Yeah, this is a, a dictionary. That's the difference. Let me make sure I mention dictionary. Uh, yeah, so I gotta mention it here. I said, but I didn't write. So this is how we dictionary is different from lists. They have to be between actually not here. I want to do it here. Uh, list, list, list. Yeah, right here. Right, so that's why we start the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Right. So list will be between square bracket, but dictionary between curly bracket, right? So you can also use copy method. I don't know if I should do that here. So name GPA, you can use that copy, that copy, right? So uh, if you want to start that to copy GPA, GPA equal that. And if you look at copy GPA, you will see that it is exactly equal to the one that we have. Again, you can use that, you can use a uh, um, pop. If you wanna pop uh, something, you can do that. 
let's say you don't want a student uh, record here, you can uh, say name GPA that top and then uh, use the key for that. So the key will be the name in this case. So let's say here, Mike. Oh, pop, that pop. Uh, so that pop. So if you look at your name GPA again, it shouldn't be, Mike should not be there. All right. So a key does not have to be a single thing. You can, uh, let's, uh, let me uh, make it a little bit complex. So complex diction. Right. So that was the problem here. If you change any one of these by these, you would get error. See? So they have to be separated. That was the problem that I have here. So, but we can uh, still grab us. The yeah, I think we can wrap it up here. Um, this recording will be available to you. It's only like a few minutes left. So I'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, Thank so you. as uh, Dr. Dumbia said, yeah, the recordings are available. This is a two week presentation, but we are presenting this in a week. So you have the recordings, you can take your time and then review the complete uh, recording. So we'll see you all tomorrow at the same time. Uh, have a good rest of the day. Bye. Hi, Bell. How are you? Everything fine? Yeah. Hi, John. Yeah. Things are well. over. Over with. Are you in uh, uh, H H M mode? <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> That's been done. <laughs> yeah. That is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're back back to work. <laughs> back to normal. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.